Hello there and welcome to this week's Granny's Garden. Well you win some and you lose some but it's now decision time. Fall as we all know is bulb planting season but it is also tree planting season and I don't want to miss this window of opportunity. Those of you who have been following me know I had been looking for a long long time for a Cornus controversa variegata otherwise known as the wedding cake tree. I live in Spain and it is very, very difficult to get hold of any type of name variety or any type of more unusual tree. I have my hidden patio and at one end where it's wider I wanted a statement tree, a wow factor tree, something that really stood out and looked beautiful and gorgeous. And I couldn't find one anywhere. So after months and months of trying, I tried online, online I could only get the little teensy weensy weensy ones and that's no good for me because it takes too long to grow. And I got finally one of about one meter fifty about five foot high and I went for it but frankly it has been struggling ever since and there she is looking very very sad for herself in actual fact I have brought this tree back from the brink of death twice already now the first time was totally my fault mea culpa I didn't realize there was a water issue it had never occurred to me and it was only when I said what the heck is going on with this tree and I sat down to study it that I realised that it was definitely too much water. I sort of dug in two inches down, then four inches down, then six inches down, and it was sudden wet. I said, oh my God, how could you be so stupid? And what was happening was, over there in the corner, whoops, around there, there is a sprinkler system. So not only was this tree receiving water from the sprinkling system directly onto the soil around the base of the tree, but I hadn't realised that the flagstones, huge big slabs of flagstones, although they look straight, when I put a level on them, they were actually inclined inwards. So all of the water falling on these massive big flagstones was cascading down and making this area totally sodden. Once I had lifted the flagstones and leaned them slightly outwards and the rain was running backwards, then things started to change and she made her first recovery. Then the summer arrived and surprisingly enough, she didn't behave too badly during the summer, despite the fact that it got really, really hot, temperatures in the high 90s and the 100s. The problem is I live in Madrid, which is in the centre of Spain, and we get the same effect as the south of Spain. We get waves of what I call the dragon's tongue. It's where like tongues of hot air, really seething hot air, arise up from the Sahara Desert in Africa. This occurs several times during the summer and is devastating. For a human, you can actually feel inside your lungs the heat of the air. It's really, really disagreeable. It's horrible. And on plants, shrubs and trees, it can cause either leaf scorch, leaf drop, or even the death of a shrub or a tree. And she didn't like it one single bit. Now over here in the shrub border, you can see this camellia that is still showing effect of that leaf scorch from this hot air from the Sahara Desert. It's recovering, obviously, because it got through it and lovely new growth being pushed out and the buds are there for next year's growth. Absolutely fantastic. In less than 24 hours, the leaves started to curl up and literally crisp under my hands like as if they were ash. And they all started, the growing tips are all affected. You can see they're completely shriveled up here. See if we can get an angle on a better one there, a better angle here. You can see they've completely shrunk in and desiccated. And this is happening on every single one of the tips. What could I do about it? Well, you all know I love to prune. Could I recover it again? Adding the fact that we're coming into winter, I might get winter damage as well. Of course, I could come in with some clever pruning and start pruning back to the healthy wood, trying to reshape the tree. But let's go around the other side. This was supposed to be my wow factor tree. Either coming this way or coming down or coming in from the gate, because you can see it from the road. I wanted this big, beautiful statement here. Not a sickly little wimp that's always looking for my help. I love pruning, but not here. Not where I want dappled shade, not deep shade. I want dappled shade. So I'm afraid it's going to be goodbye, Cornus Controversa Variegata, and good morning, hello, Persian Silk Tree. So let's welcome the newest addition to my gardening family. This is Albicia Julie Brisson Summer Chocolate. Now if you look at closely at the leaves, we had rain last night, and look how the raindrops are just falling and holding on top of that beautiful fern-like leaf. And if I look further up, you can see the bald cypress tree. Look at the contrast between this chartreuse green and this lovely chocolate brown. This Persian silk tree, as we've seen, has lovely, beautiful fern-like leaves, which gives beautiful dappled shade, which is what I'm looking for. The leaves start off green, a darkish green, and then they change as the season progresses to a dark red, and then to this almost chocolate color by the time fall arrives. 
When the leaves fall, it's not completely bare because these beautiful flowers that appear in summer, beautiful fluffy pink flowers, leaf seed pods that like peas, well no, not like peas, they're more like a bean that remain on the tree throughout the winter, giving beautiful winter interest to this tree as well. The flowers are very, very fragrant and it is also very pollinator friendly. Now there are two varieties of mimosa, the green variety and the chocolate variety. The difference, this one is not invasive because it is a member of the mimosa family and some mimosas can be invasive. The second big difference is the green varieties grow to 40 foot plus in height and this is half that height, so a lot easier to grow this in a medium or small size garden. Now I know that this tree can take the heat, but can it take the cold? I have seen this tree grow beautifully in the north of Spain. Now in the north of Spain, the temperatures are inferior to here in the center, but they do have the influence of the coast, and that does make the winter slightly milder. But I'm going to give it a go. Officially, it's US hardy to zone seven. Now I'm a zone six, sometimes six, seven. But I'm going to give it a go because I'm surrounded by higher trees, I'm a bit more sheltered and this is more sensitive in its younger years, which is why I've bought a seven footer, which I calculate as about a two year old. You might think it's very tall for a two year old, but in actual fact, this is tree. In actual fact, this tree is one of the fastest growing trees on this earth. When it's in its really high potential, it grows one inch a day about mid season when it's really got its sap going. Can you imagine that? One inch a day. So I'm going to see the full potential of this tree very, very quickly. In two years, I could have quite a good tree and quite an adult tree formed. Really fantastic. Now, as regards other requirements, it's not fussy in the slightest. Doesn't require pruning. Just let it get on with it. It can take wet, it can take dry, it can take acid, it can take alkaline, it can take sandy, stony, and even heavy clay. What more can you ask? So fingers crossed that this time it'll work and that the mm, winter hardiness is going to be just fine in this particular area, in this protected area of the garden. So fingers crossed and all I've got to do is get on with getting out the old and getting in the new. bamboo canes. The first one is the central one, it's the transport cane. Uh, as you can see this trunk is very very slender. I have mentioned before this is a very fast growing tree so it needs time to fatten out. 
Now it's very, very tightly bound every four to six inches because it actually came very, very well packaged, very tightly bound and it didn't move an inch during the transport. What I'm going to do now is loosen up all of these ties and just put a loose ties round so this has got time to grow and widen out without being strangled. Now the other three, I'm going to put a wire the whole way round and keep it during the winter because in fall here and in winter we get very, very strong storms, windstorms particularly, and I want the tree to be able to move so it gets stronger, but without bending the full way over and snapping. So that's what I'm going to do now. underneath. And with this we're going to imagine next year a whole canopy of light dappled shade. I will of course be giving you updates throughout the winter and the coming spring, particularly in spring because hopefully, fingers crossed, toes crossed as well, it'll leaf out and start to spring into action and head towards that famous one inch per day in mid-growing season. And by the end of the growing season, if it does survive this winter, I'm going to look forward to quite a wide canopy or this first first year growth canopy. And giving dappled shade to this area, this wide area of the hidden patio, I think further on in line, maybe a bench, maybe a little bistro table underneath it, definitely something to think about. What I would like to say is that if you do like a particular tree, and I do like this Persian silk tree, go for it. It says hardiness zone seven. If you can think, or if you think you've got a microclimate that might be able to get away with it, go for it. And hopefully it'll pay off. And if it doesn't, no harm done. For the moment, from me, it's bye from me. And I'll see you next week in Granny's Garden. And just as an ending, don't be afraid if something does go wrong to dig it up. If it's struggling, it doesn't uh, look right, you're not happy with us, get rid of us. You know, you all know I loved that wedding cake tree. It wasn't to be, it just can't take my climate. I see them growing in the UK and I can see them growing in Ireland and they're absolutely delightful. Unfortunately, for my garden, it wasn't to be. So, the decision was made. If you don't like it, change it. And that's exactly what I've done. So, as I said before, I'll see you next week in Granny's Garden. Bye-bye now. And look at what's loving its life in the garden. This is a thornless blackberry. Last year I planted it and it gave me enough for two bramble tarts. But look at what next year has in store for me. If I follow one of the runners out, follow it, follow it, follow it. Look at it go, look at it go. It's right up there and it is still growing. At this rate, it's going to reach the end of the garden. The other one's still got a little bit of catching up to do. But oh my goodness, what a lot of bramble tarts I'm going to have next year.